Welcome guys to this long-term update on my supercharged and tastefully modified 2005 Lexus LS430, lovingly known as the Flexus. Well, it's springtime here and that means it's time to get the Flexus out of storage. And the reason I don't winter drive this car, believe me, it was tempting because I love driving it that much, but it's too clean to winter drive. There's no rust underneath it. This car came out of Florida. So I just, I like this car too much to put it through that. So I did store it for the winter and that means it's time for an oil change in the spring as well as give it a bit of a cleanup. And then we're, we'll go for a drive in it and we'll talk to you guys about what it's been like to live with this car for over a year now. I've put over 10,000 miles on it, maybe 15,000 kilometers, and uh, I've loved every minute of it. So uh, let's get this thing looking good, address maybe one mechanical issue, and then we'll go for that drive. If you guys would like a grand tour even better than the Flexus, then guess what? We've got an amazing opportunity for you. We are working with Omaze to give you the chance to win a 2022 McLaren GT, all in support of an amazing cause, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. For your chance to win, all you have to do is go to amaze.com forward slash speed academy and a 2022 McLaren GT could be yours. And what would you do with it? I know if it was me, I'd probably go on like a cross country tour in it because it is a GT car, but it's also got like 651 horsepower. So I think I'm gonna make a few stops along the way at my favorite racetrack. So uh, let us know in the comments below what you would do if you were lucky enough to win that 2022 McLaren GT. And of course, the beauty of this is that by entering the sweepstakes, you are also supporting an amazing charity. Make-A-Wish has been uh, helping critically ill children in, in more than 50 countries have a wish fulfilled and that really does give them a very big morale boost and may in fact kind of like give them uh, uh, the sort of spirit to fight the illness that they are battling. So if you ever wanted to feel good while taking a chance at winning a McLaren GT, I think this is the opportunity for you. So again, make sure to go to amaze.com forward slash speed academy and enter for your chance to win. This being Alexis, the only maintenance I've had to do is uh, change the oil once in a while. It just keeps running like a top even though we've added some Ford content here it hasn't affected the reliability and hasn't even affected the fuel economy so for a fresh oil change it is springtime here and i am getting the flexus ready to party for the summer we're going with valvoline's latest and greatest motor oil this is their extended protection which is their most advanced formula yet and uh, it's designed with their new dual defense additive performance package and really what that does is not only reduce engine wear dramatically but it also really helps combat sludge and deposit buildups remarkably well so this is their very highest performing uh, full synthetic oil it is the best stuff you can get and uh, when you love your flexus as much as i do you want to treat it to the good stuff now that i've bragged about how reliable my lexus is there was one thing that i thought may have failed on it and that is the windshield washer motor because when you pull the stock toward you, it activates the wipers, but it wasn't misting the windscreen. As you can see, no mist. And you can't hear the motor going either. So I thought, oh, maybe a fuse is blown or a relay is gone or whatever. I had a look at those, they all seemed fine. So we assumed the motor was gone. We actually ordered one on eBay. And then uh, I did some Googling. Turns out the stock has a little button on the end of it, everybody. And you have to press that button and look what happens. Oh, DP. So, I've never owned a car where I didn't have to pull the stock toward me to activate the mist function or the wipers. I've never had a button on the end of a stock before. And somehow I clearly had forgotten since I hadn't, I haven't driven this car in four or five months, how to work this thing. So turns out the only thing that was broken around here is my old brain.
If you watched the original build series on the Flexus, you'll recall that we did ceramic coat the paint and it is still working well. It is beading quite nicely, but it's over a year old. So we figured we would try out this new product product from Sonax called Ceramic Ultra Slick Detailer. They say just uh, apply it in a nice even coat like that and then wipe it off with a clean dry towel. So it is a classic Mr. Miyagi scenario of ceramic on, ceramic off. So And it's supposed to last six months. Wow. Believe it or not. Yeah, so, that, yeah. that's impressive. So the technology these days with all of the ceramic coating and making it easier and easier for the home user is uh, is win-win for me, man, because the less time we have to spend doing this, feels like it's a cleaning academy today, right? Yeah, it does. And I, I must say the paint feels slicker now that I've done that. Like it has that fresh, slick ceramic coat feel to it. So it's definitely doing something. Now that I've got the paint looking good, it's time to do the same for the wheels. And one thing that's tweaking my OCD, and I'm sure Pete's almost having a seizure over this, we have a chrome locking nut on here and then four black regular nuts on here and it just doesn't look proper. I can't remember why we did this last year. We needed to steal a nut off of here for something else we were working, I think, and we just tossed these on here because it was like a quick and temporary solution. So now is the time to fix it. And by the way, these augment wheel, uh, you know, Mark II Celica Supra style wheels are still my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Other than my kids, these things make me so happy. I just love the way they look on the car. And I know some people get triggered by the fact that it's five lug with, uh, with what visually is a four lug wheel. And there's little cutouts here to kind of trick the eye to make it look like a four lug. And if you're up here studying up close, yes, it'll bother you. But once you're five feet away from the car, it looks exactly the way you would want it to look. The wheel and tire off here, you can see we've got our Fortunato 500 series coilovers in there and hard race arms. There's three arms on each side. And they all use spherical bearings, which I was concerned would make the ride height, ride quality harsh. But they have not done that at all, actually. The ride quality in this car is remarkably good. So the valving on the 500 series coilovers and these hard race arms gave us the adjustability to get the ride height the way we wanted, the alignment the way we wanted. And they added basically no ride harshness to speak of. This car rides really, really well. And as you can see, because of that alignment, we were able to pre prevent any kind of tire wear. Like, look at the condition of these things, PT. These have like at least 10,000 miles on them, maybe 15, and they still look brand new. Like, Conti puts these little details in the rubber that are almost like wear markers. So as the D goes away or the W goes away, when the W goes away, it means they're not, they're not optimal for wet anymore. And then when the D goes away, they're not optimal for dry anymore. So these are literally like wear indicators and they still look brand new. The reason I pulled the wheel and tire off though is because the chrome lips on these wheels were never uh, ceramic coated or coated in any other way, they are starting to, what's the right word for this, Pete? It's not corrode, it's, not it's uh, oxidized. oxidized. We can get that off with a bit of uh, chrome polish and then I think I'm gonna ceramic coat it to help prevent this oxidation from, from forming. Diving into trying to polish these and boy, I just did one little section there and look at the amount of oxide that comes off. And it's very labor intensive. Like it's, you gotta polish it hard by hand. So I'm gonna try the old foam ball on the screwdriver here and see if I can get the bulk of it looking better with this. And then I can kind of touch up the areas that I can't get at with this. We are, by the way, using Sonax's uh, chrome and aluminum paste. Well, I mean, you can see it does do a good job in this area. It is much cleaner and shinier than it was. Well, that is about as good as I can do with that foam ball and a bit of polishing by hand. And frankly, it's not great, but it looks better than it did. Before it had a lot of that nasty, you know, oxide in the in the chrome, and now it's better, but it's far from perfect. So I'm not gonna ceramic coat this because there's just too much crud sort of packed in around the spokes that I wanna get out properly before I ceramic coat it. So maybe in the winter, I'll disassemble these while the car is parked and actually like polish them properly or take them to a polisher, have them polished and then ceramic coat them. But this is gonna have to do for this year, guys. So uh, man, when you buy wheels with chrome lips, coat them before you run them because it'll save you a lot of work. These new guys are from Dorman. And I think just going to a smaller 17 mil head on this should make life a little easier dealing with that unique center cap situation. And there are lock nuts in here that are black. So it's all gonna match and look proper. And as you can see, it does look much better. It's a bit like Pete's BMW. She's a five footer, but 
actually she's a two footer even up close she looks pretty darn good now so uh is it time for a drive pt i think it is all right me hearties welcome aboard me land yacht with my first meet peter here we gotta get you a pirate outfit or something pt i'm the only one here in costume I, i'm What's just here the... temporarily you know <laughs> that's right well uh this is of course the flexus on the roughest road in hamilton we like to uh talk bad about this road because it truly is horrendous and on these fortune auto coilovers it just oh. uh just takes it like a champ this is arguably i think the best riding automobile with coilovers that i've been in in terms of compliance like noise yes and how it feels uh comparatively to stock yeah yeah it really is very comfortable and even though the car is pretty low i'm never getting into situations where I'm like bottoming out the, the chassis or bottoming out the shocks even on some like pretty big whoops that we have on the 403 and the 401 highway here I'm sure you know the ones I mean yep yeah the car handles those extremely well so about the only time I could offer any kind of criticism on the coilovers is over like really harsh little like peak bumps it kind of crashes over those yeah so it doesn't have quite enough high-speed compliance to soak those up and you do get some shock as a result of that but that's about the only type of bump that these coilovers don't handle beautifully so very happy with the ride quality they offer and uh, obviously the Contis which we gush about regularly have been fantastic they're really perfect for any kind of summer three season really kind of use like I drove this car on these tires up until probably November oh, my me PT just, oh yeah well I don't see like, and, and that's the thing anymore. it's it's th this car is so smooth yeah um with the power delivery like that blower didn't change the demeanor of this engine it just added a little bit of extra power right? yeah yeah i think we ended up adding about 80 or so wheel horsepower and it does bring it to life a little but it doesn't make it drive like a modified car yeah it feels very oe and some of that obviously comes from the ECU tuning that uh, all for swaps did for us as far as like the overall drivability of this car goes I mean I just love the way it cruises down the highway comfortably I have plenty of power if I want to pass people it actually is kind of deceivingly quick like from say 100k to 140k if I need to like, accelerate past people yeah. on the highway it is very fast and and yet quiet and you know comfortable so it kind of catches you out sometimes how quick it is and uh, People love this car everywhere I take it. I park it at the zoo and I have people leave notes on the windshield saying, oh my God, it's the Flexus. I love this car so much. That's funny. Yeah, so that's funny. So it just, wherever I take this car, people just kind of love it. Kids on mountain bikes will be riding by and we'll be rubbing, rubbernecking over this car. Like of all the cars we've built, why are kids know, looking at this big <laughs> land yacht? But it just has presence. It really has a lot of visual presence. Somehow it's got that. I don't know. It's got that black with chrome look. Yeah. I mean, it's all tinted out. Yeah, it, it, yeah I, I think it, it certainly hits home in a certain style and way. I, I think with the lip kit, it just added exactly what you would want to this car. It was, you know, in hindsight, it was perfection um, sourcing those parts. It really was. All right, PT, I'm gonna give you a little pull here. Yeah, please. Again, I forgot what this thing feels like. Oh. It's incredible how smooth it is, DP. Even over these oh, world man. rally spec roads here. You're, you're, you're right. It does feel deceivingly fast. Yeah. Like it's, it's undercover fast. It is. It's, it's kind of the ultimate Q-ship. It's, it's quiet. The yeah, gearbox yeah. shifts very smoothly. And it shifts when you want to. Like it uses all the rev range. Yeah. It really is a pretty impressive automatic gearbox. And it downshifts right away. Like when yeah. I put my foot in it, it gets to the gear it yeah. should be in and there's really not that's thanks a lot to of that ecu around. tuning right it otherwise does. this thing would have been lazy on it so. for sure for sure and i mean there is a power mode option from lexus that does make it a little snappier yeah. but uh the tuned ecu makes a big difference oh, a little, yeah. little bit wow. of blower noise there yeah. too like yeah. just a little oh. bit of whine and the brakes feel good it's like got those big boy brakes on yeah it. it's got stop tech uh sport pads and yep. motors we haven't had to do anything we haven't had such a nut or a bolt we haven't had a, any leaking i know fluid. That's, that's the toyota reliability right yeah it's just like i can park this in the driveway unlike a bmw and not worry about leaving a puddle on my yeah. on my yeah. freshly painted yeah, you, driveway, you can't so. leave a bmw parked for a year without uh, worrying that power steering is going to be flowing out of it it's a thing like man. something broke so, so it, yeah it, it is nice having a, a toyota that you can just like go on long drives with oh boy 
go on long drives with with the family and just not stress about yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I really have no complaints about this car. I mean, obviously there are people who are like, oh, when are you going to do the six-speed swap? Or when are you going to do the Supra LSD rear end? Which are kind of like the two big ticket performance mods you could do on this chassis. But for what I do with it, like I literally nah, just cruise perfect, to work and back. Man, it's perfect. I cruise exactly. with my kids on the weekend. I'm yeah. often in stop yeah. and go traffic where an automatic is yeah. just nicer to have. Yeah, 100%. My wife can drive it. Yep. I can lend it to any of my friends. They don't have to know how to drive a stick. And as far as the LSD goes, like, this is not a track car. No. Like, the only reason to put an LSD in it is so I could do a two-wheel burnout. Yeah. That's literally the only that, that reason to do it. That would be exactly. And this isn't, like, if we want to do burnouts, we've got the Supra, we've got your yeah, 2JM3, yeah, yeah. you know? No, like, this, this serves a certain purpose, an intended purpose, to get you, you know, to point A to point B reliably and in a fun manner. And I think it is the epitome of exactly that. Like, if you just need a car, like, wh wh everything you explained, this one is, is perfect. Like the gas mileage yeah. is not terrible. It's not yeah. truck-like. No. You know, you, it's it's good. Yeah, I, I get like uh, 11 liters per 100 kilometers where the Tundra gets 16. Yeah. So it's significantly better than the Tundra. Yeah. In miles per gallon, I'm guessing that's like, you know, mid-teens in the Tundra and low to mid-20s in this. Yeah. Um, and really for a supercharged V8 to get that kind of fuel economy is pretty remarkable. A lot of it has to come down to the six-speed. You know, you're loping along at 2,000 RPM on the highway, so you're not pulling a lot of revs. And uh, the nice thing about the blower is it's really not, it doesn't seem to add any kind of fuel consumption yeah. in cruising mode, but it does give you that extra jam when you want it. Speaking of extra jam, PT. That's right, we gotta do a couple more sends here. Yeah. Oh, man. It's oh. so smooth. The, um, the exhaust mod that we did, basically we deleted the mufflers. Yeah. And it sounds sporty, yep. but it's not loud. No. And it really is not boomy or droney. There's like one RPM range right around 1500 RPM when the engine's cold, where it does get a little boomy. Yeah. But once it warms up, it's fine. It goes right away. And really, the cabin is just so quiet and so insulated. Exactly. That it might, somebody might hear it on the highway and it might be, you know, a tad bit high, but in here, like, it's just, oh. It's very livable. It's yeah, really, it's it, really, it really quite is. Nice. It's great. It could be. I think significantly louder if we were to say delete the resonators or put headers on it. Yeah, but what for? Again, like so you like, can come home we... at midnight, you know, into your neighborhood and not worry exactly. about waking people up. Exactly. Or, you know. No, it's great. And when you start it up, it does have a nice like growl to it. Yeah. It gives you a little bit of a shot of adrenaline when you yep. first fire it up. So, yeah, man, I, I'm I'm really just enjoying everything about driving this car, and I don't think there's anything I want to change at this point. Although tuning the ECU for more boost. Very tempting. You do have to upgrade the injectors oh, and you do have man, to upgrade the fuel the pump. Whole... So Brandon's been like, beware if you want more boost, you need a pump and injectors. So, but, but you know, it, to me it just doesn't make sense because of the amount of effort that you have to put into it um, to get that extra power. It's not like you're adding another 80 horsepower. No. You know what I mean? It's not enough. Yeah, it's just not enough to warrant the amount of work time and effort and then the worry about the reliability. Yeah, it's true. I mean, these three UZs, the rods are known to be their weak link, and it seems like 400 wheel is right about where they go boom. Yeah. So we're still well below that. We're 100 wheel below that, and if we added 50 wheel with more boost, I think we'd still be very safe. But would it change the driving experience enough to make it worth all the time and effort and expense to do that? That's really the question, and I might do it just for the fun of it because Brandon's talking about coming up here just because he wants to use the car as sort of a test mill. Yep. So if he does, then you know maybe we'll do that later this year just to show you guys what's possible with this ECU and with this engine. But realistically, I don't need to do it. And if I was, you know, if I had no, if I wasn't running a YouTube channel where developing cars is kind of what we do, yeah. I wouldn't be in a hurry to yeah. do it. Yeah, that's, sure. that's fair. So. Well, there you have it, guys. That is a wrap on this long-term update on the Flexus. And I call it long term. We've owned it for about a year and a half now. And like I said, we put a good amount of mileage on it. So I've just loved every minute of owning this car. It's really, I think, caught me by surprise, probably caught Peter surprise. And I think it caught a lot of you guys by surprise too, because I still get messages on Instagram, via email. Any way you can reach me, you've reached out to me and told me how much you love the Flexus and uh, how much you'd like to buy it. And yes, I have had offers, had some offers in the mid 20s, which are not a bad offer on this car, but I'm just not interested in selling it. I really love it that much. I think it's kind of my, uh, I don't want to say forever daily driver, but it's uh, a car I, in, I intend to enjoy for uh, a lot of uh, summers still to come. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you want more long-term 
long-term updates on some of our other project cars, by all means, let us know in the comment section below what cars you'd like updates on next. You want to see uh, PT's M5 wagon maybe as a, you know, a uh, compatriot to this or maybe you have something else you'd like to see a long-term update on. So uh, let us know and thanks again for watching everyone.